Hello, welcome to me. I look weird on this camera. Uh, this is, I'm filming this, so I should just do a proper introduction. This is letmeboreyoutosleep.com. My name is Jason Newland, and this is Let Me Bore You To Sleep. And I'm doing something I haven't done for quite a while, is I'm filming this live, I'm recording it live on Facebook. And um, so that's why I'm in a little bit of a muddle as far as what I'm doing. So Sherry McDonald is here. Hello. I've got this. I don't th For those of you that are listening on the podcast, go to YouTube and you can see this. It's these are all the wires for the uh, microphone and it goes for about a mile it's all tangled and I just don't know where to put it which is a <laughs> it's a problem but hopefully <coughs> excuse me it should be alright uh, hi so it's going to be a few different noises to normal and one of the reasons is if you can see I've got a carrier bag here with a little ferret inside who is asleep to get out. Do you want to say hello to everybody? Say hello. 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 So only listen when you can safely close your eyes as per usual. And uh, here you go. Little Andre's just he's just here. You wanna get off? He wants to go away. Oh I get let him go. There you go. So what I thought I would do is be boring online, but at the same time I've got Robin Horton Kalf watching. Sherry says she's going to listen later when she wants to go to sleep. So there's going to be, there might be a few people come on here that haven't been on for a while. And it's about 2.30 in the morning. These glasses look weird on me. I don't know. I look like they kind of magnify my eyes, but they don't normally. And I've got a moth. See that? I don't know if you can see it. It's a little moth lying around. Well, it's not little, it's a big moth. But just one moth, for some reason. So a quick update. I'm still waiting on the app for my deep sleep whisper hypnosis sessions to be updated, not updated, but I don't know, processed or released or whatever. I don't know what the right terminology is, but um, I'm waiting for Google Play Store to actually give the 
to let me know that it's live and then I can start sharing it with people oh the little moth just banged into the light and just fell down on the floor now it's flying around again and I haven't done a live stream for ages and ages and ages and I was thinking about doing a live stream as a 200th like birthday celebration for this podcast because um, I think this is number 191 so I've still got nine left before I get to the 200 but it's a case of just I'm not sure hmm. so Caroline Spinks has just joined hello this is just a uh, boring <laughs> that's really not very enticing is it say oh come and join my boring thing shall I add some people let's see add some people to come just see if anyone wants to come. So I'm just gonna add a few people. See if anyone wants to join me live. But you can't just like send send it to everyone. The camera's probably shaking a bit because we're well, not shaking like fearful, but I'm touching the screen as I press the invite button to people that possibly don't even know who I am. It's just one of those things that I do. I can't really see the names of the people particularly well because it's on a phone, it's very small writing. That's the thing, you know, to have bigger writing, you need a biggest screen and because I don't have a bigger screen on this particular phone I therefore can't see the writing as well as I would if it was on a bigger screen you know if the writing was larger it's not that I want to read books with big writing I'm not, I'm not quite at that point although I do remember going into the library when I was younger. Uh, most things seem to have happened when I was younger. And there was always, there was different sections. There was the children's section, which I used to look at because when I was a child, I used to uh, look at that section. But I was also interested in, you know, uh, every other section really but the only section where I didn't really spend much time was the section for big print didn't spend much time looking at those books but occasionally I have a little little look you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things, you know, when you kind of, if you do it too often, it's, it's no longer a treat. So I'd kind of have a little visit sometimes. I'd, it's not that I'd plan it. I wouldn't put it in my diary, you know, next to all the other things that I'd write down, like, you know, time to urinate and uh, look out the window and maybe put my shoes on. Um, with a little caption make sure you put your socks on first JJ and uh, so I never kind of put in there oh, and visit the library to look at the big printed books although I would put in you know visit the library but I quite liked the big print books because you could see the writing better 
and it's not that my eyesight was well I don't know because I started wearing glasses for reading when I was 15 I think and uh, so there is a possibility that maybe I needed reading glasses before that time because I didn't suddenly need glasses to read the day before going to the opticians. And I do question, has anybody ever been to the opticians? Anybody that doesn't wear glasses, has anybody ever been to the opticians and not left with, a, with being told that they need to wear glasses? I wonder if that has ever happened. And has anybody ever gone to the opticians who wear glasses and been told that they didn't need to change the prescriptions, they didn't need to change the lenses? Because that's nothing's ever happened to me. I always need to change it. It's it's kind of weird. It's, imagine if that was like that for the for the. Um, You know what is it the the pelvic exam that ladies have to have? I, f I forget. You know the smear test or whatever. I know that I've I've had girlfriends. I know it's something you need to do. But imagine if like it changes every time and they say, "Oh, it's not there anymore. It's somewhere else. We're going to have to look f into your ear this time." It's like, what are you doing? So yeah, I mean going to the opticians is nothing like having a smear test, I know, I don't, I wasn't, I didn't actually expect to be talking about uh, such things as um, opticians. But I remember I picked one of these books up. I'm still inviting people. I don't know why I'm inviting people. It's uh, I don't imagine anyone is going to visit. But this is a recording that I was going to do anyway. But I would have just been doing it, staring at the wall. So at least this way I can look at myself in the uh, Andre. Sorry about that, that's Andre. He's always doing that when I'm. Anyone that listens to recordings regularly will know that Andre lets off. He guffs quite a lot. Um, naughty boy, Andre. It's awful. I mean, I'm trying to be professional here. <laughs> yep, professional. Professional. I'm very, I'm very pro. Not pro everything. So I spoke to my friend on the phone earlier and she called from, I don't know, somewhere in America. And it's just amazing the technology that we have now. I mean, I remember when I was a kid used to have two yogurt pots with a bit of string attaching them and you'd be in I'd be my brother and me and we'd be in bunk beds and he'd be on the top bunk and I'd be on the bottom bunk or one way or the other and we'd be talking through the yogurt pot saying can you hear me can you hear me of course I can hear you you're in the same bed as me it's just but it was fun have the internet back then. I suppose if we did have the internet back then we would have both been playing Fortnite or weekly or whatever it's called every other day. So I'm just inviting. I realise just inviting people is probably just annoying them. Imagine if they've got um, what's it called you know when your phone beeps 
So people are asleep and suddenly their phone is beeping out of the blue. I didn't think about that. Because I turn all mine off so I can never get disturbed. Apart from once, it's recently, um, a friend moaned at me that I didn't have my phone on and he needed to get hold of me and it was an emergency. So I thought, okay, because I sleep during the day. I said, all right, I'll leave it on. Which I never normally do. I put it on silent or I put it on do not disturb. And then I got a phone call, five past six in the morning. I'd only been in bed for about an hour and a half. And it was someone else I know that was phoning thinking I was somebody else. And I was like, well, and he was I saying, what do you want? I was saying, what do you want? I'm asleep, what do you want? The thing is, when I, I, when I said, you see you, bye, and you know, because he said, oh, sorry, wrong number, which you don't expect at five past six in the morning, do you really? And he said, uh, also when it's someone you know. And he said, and he went, so I went back to bed. When I woke up, I don't know, midday, one o'clock, something like that. I, I, I actually, I was sitting in my big black squeaky chair and I actually thought to myself, I wonder if that really happened or if I just dreamt it. And so I went and got my phone, so it meant standing up on my, from my chair. And what I normally do when I stand up, because it's a recliner, so I have to push forward. And then I, I normally push up on both hands, but I seem to put extra weight on my left hand for some reason. I think the reason is because when I get out of my chair, I always turn left because there's nothing on the right other than the wall. And there's no reason to walk into the wall, is there really? I've not found any reason. I mean, if it, were, if it was some like special wall like in Harry Potter, and I could walk through it and it'd take me to uh, Coggle Castle or whatever it's called then but even then I don't know would I want to go it doesn't sound like a really good place to go does it and all them monsters and wizards and stuff it's a bit like uh, I don't know it just ugh. so I'm not giving you any attention if anyone is actually online listening or watching as I'm actually recording this live, then um, I'm ignoring you at the moment, not purposely or purposefully, purpose partially, um, because I haven't got that screen on, because I'm just inviting thousands of people. And I don't even know why really. There's no point. I wonder if anyone's actually watching. There might be some people watching. How weird would that be if I came on and there was like a million people and they were saying, Oi, we're, we're saying hello to you, but you're not, you're not answering. I got a message from somebody today online. Um, it's actually on YouTube, a YouTube video. And it was a requested video or requested session for uh, phobias of balloons. And uh, this lady asked me to make a, if I would make a video, a, a, you know, recording to help with her phobia of balloons. So I did. And this was months ago. And she left a comment on the YouTube video telling me that it's been helpful for her. So that's that was nice. It's always nice to hear that I'm not just talking to myself. Although kind of technically I am, but in other ways I'm not. 
depending on, you know, I mean, yesterday, Tuesday, no, Wednesday, my podcast, I had 2,500 downloads. So somebody's listening somewhere. Yeah, there must be. Unless it's just one person listening <laughs> two and a half thousand times to the same recording. Which is not because it's different podcasts they're listening to. Plus, to do that would take thousands and thousands of hours um, so I've only got one person watching has anyone said I look forward to listening okay so God, it's weird I prefer it when I'm not looking at myself that's why I don't, I don't really like doing videos anymore because you know when you just you're just too good looking and it's it's just a, a distraction it's a distraction I just you know I want to just focus on being doing a boring recording but then I see myself and I think wow now that's a stud oh And now I realise I don't know what time it is. So I don't know how long I've been recording for, which is a downfall because it's good to know what time it is so that I stop after an hour. Although yesterday I did a recording that lasted for about Um, about an hour and a half, I think. So I don't know who's watching. I've got O'Clain Corey, Bonnie. Um, it, it's Sawalwich Kada, and Angela Bauer. Um, so I don't know who's watching this. So what other things? Um. Why was I talking about my big black squeaky chair? Something happened. Oh, I can't remember. So, I was going to tell you a story about that. It was something. Something. Yeah. I do wonder about my eyesight. Whether it's going to deteriorate or you know I mean generally your eyesight doesn't improve with age does it uh, so um, it probably may deteriorate a little bit but I've got in my family I've got um, macular degenerative thing that's kind of my nan's got it or my nan had it my dad's got it so there's a chance that I might have inherited it so I hope not though I mean it's it's bad enough that I've been born with a perfect body and a muscular physique and you know super strength um, uh, perfection is is definitely a chore sometimes so let me see what's happened lately. So for those that haven't listened to my sessions lately, uh, my update is I now have 10 10 websites and Brook Hallowell is uh, also watching and Linda 
Lin Linda L Lin uh, Marvel is watching. Can you see this? Are you ready? You ready? Do you see that? A little moth, it literally landed on my arm. And then I just, really, I should let it out the window, shouldn't I? And it got in somehow. Yeah, that's what I should do. I should try and find it. And is it me or is it starting to look light bright, light outside? No, it can't be. It's not even three o'clock yet. Wow. Um, yeah, so I was going to talk about Brooke, but I can't now because she's watching. Oh. She's the person who's speaking to me on the phone. And well, that was it really, I was just going to say I had a phone call with someone. Oh yeah, then I talked about the yogurt pots. So yeah, that was the whole story. Not that the yogurt, just if Brooke, if you're watching, I didn't, I didn't talk about yogurt. It was just that when I was a kid, we used to have yogurt pots with string in between and we'd talk through it and we could hear the other person, which is quite good. Quite difficult to fit to another house though. I mean, the yogurt pots were great ideas, but as a, like a communication system for like a city, I don't think it would really work. Not even for a village. Maybe for a house. Because I suppose, mind you, because if you're gonna put, if you make a hole in the wall for the yogurt pot to speak into it, you might as well just leave the hole empty and talk through the hole and have a a glory, glorifying um, conversation, and it's uh, it'd be glorious. I don't know, give, give it a name, a glory hole, I suppose. It's glorious to be able to talk through it. Um, you know, first man's f or your human being's first uh, telecommunication system, a hole in a wall. I suppose talking to another person. I suppose that would be the first, maybe, I don't know. Smoke signals. See, I don't know if, how that would work. Because I used to be in the Sea Cadets and I remember asking the person in charge what um hi susan hi trisha hi angela susan is one of my biggest supporters on here uh, as well as brooke as well of course um but so thank you for your support um yeah, my sea cadets, I said to him, hi. I said, I didn't say hi. Um, we were already halfway through the evening. You say hi at the beginning, don't you? Just like, don't wait until an hour and a half in and say, by the way, hi. But, so I was in the sea cadets and I said to the person who was in charge, I said, do smoke signals actually work? And he said, we're learning how to make knots. Can you, just get, can you just make the knots? I said, I know, but I want to talk about smoke signals. And he said, well, why do you always want to talk about things that aren't relevant to the actual thing we're doing? I said, what, what do you mean? 
He said, you're always asking questions that have nothing to do with that particular topic or um, event or activity or other words that kind of mean the same thing um, to what we're doing or why. And I said, so I, look, I looked at him and I said, but m my dad has a shed at the bottom of the garden and he keeps, he's an electrician and he keeps all his tools and all of the cable that he uses in his work and every day when he gets home from work me and my brothers would have to carry all the cable and the tools down to the bottom of the shed. It was kind of like a workshop. And he said, yeah, there you go, you gain. What's that got to do with what we're talking about? I said, I don't understand. Well, what, what do you mean? And he said, what, what's your dad's workshop and tools? got to do with this conversation that we're having about you asking questions like whatever it was about you know fire signals or whatever when we're making knots I said well there is a connection he said, okay, I'd love to hear it. I said to him, you know what I love to hear? I like to hear Top of the Pops. I like to listen to that. And what I do is we record it, I record it on the radio. Because my brother's got a job, my older brother, and he works in Tesco's in the evening. So Top the Pops is on Thursday nights at 7 I think or 7.30, 7. So what I do is, no it's not 7, it used to be on Tuesday evening on the radio, that's right, that's why. Because we had a video recorder so we could have recorded it on the video. But that wasn't it. He wanted to listen on a Tuesday because then he had the he knew who was number one before Top of the Pops was on, but he listened to the radio charts on Radio One. But he was working on a Tuesday, so what he would do is he would ask me to record it. But what I would do is I'd have the stereo system on, put the, the, the tape recorder in, and there was this block of. Um, it's like one of those stack systems. I think it was it was on the right hand side of the room as you faced because there was two there was two doorways. It was basically two rooms knocked into one. And because my dad knocked a hole into what into it and um, made it a lot bigger. Well obviously two room one room is one size and the other room is another size so when you join them together even if one room is only the size of um, I don't know a packet of fish fingers a little box of fish fingers even if it's like really little when you when you knock through it's still going to be bigger than it was before so there was two rooms but one room had uh, the sitting room furniture, like, uh, uh, was it settees? And there was like this little corner table, but there was settees, because there was how many or so was there? It was me, I always have to remember myself, otherwise I forget myself. Me, there was my brother, my oldest brother, 
who was four years older than me. There was my other brother that was two years younger than my oldest brother, but two years older than me. And then there was my little brother who was eight years younger than me. Then there was the parents. So how many is that? Six people are living in that house. So there would generally be, it must have been about six seats. So seatage for six people. Although, if I recall, sometimes I would sit down on the floor and um, I seemed to be comfortable doing that. Which is quite weird because I had quite a bony bum back then. I filled out with age and I can sit down on the floor now and I've got some cushion in. So I've got a nice big bouncy bum now. But it's my knees, you know, I can't it's a little bit of a struggle to get up off the off the floor. Um before when I was younger, when I was little, like little little, I used to sit down on a bony bum, but I used to be able to jump up. My knees were like springs or slinkies that are just like I just bounce like a pongo is it pogo stick I just bounce up and like bash my head on the ceiling and I was just like so bouncy my knees were just honestly like springs but a bony bum I don't know why I had a bony bum I was very slim very slim and even when I was like about 16, 17, I was very self-conscious about my bum, having a little a little bum. Never, and then I think I was in my, probably in my 20s, and I realized that I'd inherited it because my dad's got a small bum. Not bony, but it's just, <laughs> seems weird talking about my dad's bum, but, you know, I didn't realise because I never really, never really wanted to look before. Just, but I just rem just realised when I was in my twenties that my dad was all upper body. Not all upper body. I mean, he, he did. You know, he wasn't just he just didn't have like feet coming out of his hips. He did have the lower side as well, but he was like all very top heavy. And I realised I, I kind of maybe taken after him. Before that, I was, and I thought, yeah, but before maybe my mum had a bony bum, but I don't know. So, but now I've got a, a bat. <laughs> I've got a bouncy bottom, and it's, 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 it is like a. Sometimes I think I need to get myself a bra for my bum, honestly. But anyway, that's not really what I was talking about. So the, we had the settee and there was a television in that room and there was a carpet. That's the one thing about, I can always say about my dad, regardless, he was always working and um, didn't really, never really seen eye to eye on a lot of stuff. The one thing I'll say about my dad, and I always, always back him up on this, and I always support him on this. No matter where he's lived, he's always had carpet on the floor. So in the other room, uh, which was kind of still part of the same room, but it wasn't. If that makes sense, it was, it was as in you could walk into it but it's basically a doorway without a door I mean if you take the door off the hinges of a doorway does it stop being a separate room see if I took the door off of the living room door the door that's here this is my living room 
does that mean that this is now part of the bathroom? No. Is it part, maybe it's part of the hallway? No. Part of the bedroom? No. So, it's kind of a weird one, it's like, yeah. but the other room, although it's technically the same room, but not really, had, it was about the same size, probably a little bit smaller, but possibly a bit bigger. I'll be honest, when I was a young child, I really measured things, rarely. I didn't have a tape measure, you know, on me all the time. So I didn't always measure things. I think I only started measuring things when I got to about 14. And even then, it wasn't the room. So then I didn't need a tape measure, just a little ruler. Because uh, I just like to measure the gaps in the on the windowsill, of course. And in this room that had the table, which was where we would have our like, celebratory dinners, like Christmas or Easter, um, Valentine's, I don't recall ever having celebrated Valentine's Day. Although it might have happened. I have, and this is just coming to my mind now, I have, because everything else, it was all scripted, <laughs> that I said so far, I'm reading off a script, don't you know? Everything, I, I have a faint memory of my parents having a Valentine's night with some friends, I think, which was, I don't know, I think it was, must have been quite good and they, uh, there was a few of them there and I imagined, I kind of got a sense that when people got together in, this is what I thought, when people, a lot of people got together, a lot of couples got together, that their memory started to kind of fade a little bit because for some reason, they all had their car keys in one big bowl. Everyone kind of put their car keys in there. So I guess, you know, they didn't want to forget where they put their car keys. So, I've never had a car myself. Um, so, I don't really know what the etiquette is for uh, car key storage whilst at a dinner party. Um, but maybe that is the way it is and uh, I don't know what uh, what was going on really but there was some strange sounds at one point I thought there was a pig running around squealing and going oink oink but then I remembered that pigs don't really actually go oink oink. It's really just like a, like a visual bubble with writing in that you see in a, a comic or a paper or a book. Anyway. I remember clearing up the day after because we all used to have to do housework for our pocket money. And uh, that's why as soon as I was old enough, 
I said, stuff your pocket money. I'm gonna get myself my own part-time job and do something else, do something I wanna do for my money. So I got a job as a paper boy, not a paper girl. I asked to be a paper girl, but they said no. You have to be a paper boy. But I said, what about the girls? And the person in charge of the shop said, look, this is 1983. We still use a term paper boy. We still use a term policeman. You know, this, uh, this hasn't happened. It's not till the 90s that we start kind of using different terms. And I said, what do you mean? What do you mean different terms? And he said, well, you know, during the 80s, I mean, we're only in 1983 now. And I said, yeah, I know what year we're in. I didn't, <laughs> so that was lucky, but I, you know, don't always let on though, don't let on. Because people don't always know. Um, the good thing about doing a paper round is generally you know what the date is, or at least what the day is. So I'd be like, I used to have an early morning paper round and I was like, oh, it's Tuesday today. And then I think, I wonder what's on television today. And then I'd look at the TV papers, the TV, you know, section. And I'd look and say, oh, Charlie's Angels is on. Oh, the Hulk is on. Although I don't know if the Hulk was still on at that time. I think it might have stopped being on. Oh, Mr. Merlin is on. See, I don't remember if I had a morning paper round and an evening paper round at the same time. And uh, then I don't remember that. And the bloke said to me, "You do realise that um, Diana has just." posted a message on your Facebook uh, saying that, hello, you have a soothing voice, love your ferret. And I said, I know, but I'm talking to you about the, um, you're gonna tell me about the 90s or something. And he said to me, yeah, but at least acknowledge it and say, thank you, Diana. So, okay, thank you, Diana, thank you. And he said, well, that's, that's better. You need to have more respect and be a bit more observant towards the people that are listening and watching. And I said, what are you talking about? I'm standing here waiting for the newspapers. And he said, no, I'm talking about when you're in your late 40s, you know, 19, 19 2009. I don't know, back, when will you be 49? And I said, I don't know. 49, I'm only 13. He said, I know, but 49, 13, 40, that's gonna be 13, 23, 33, 43, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 35 years time. So in 35 years time, when you're making recordings. Make sure that you are attentive and that you don't ignore the people that are listening and watching. And I said, listening and watching what? And he said, watch your tone, Sonny. I said, oh, sorry. He said, now, watching what you say that well when you're older you're going to be making these recordings on the internet and it's going to be like relaxation helping people to sleep 
uh, help you know doing chronic pain recordings and making podcasts doing videos on YouTube um, and you're going to devote your life to that and I said to him are the papers ready yet and he said what why why are you not why are you ignoring what I'm telling you this is important I said yeah it's important but so is getting home in time to watch Charlie's Angels So I've got connection available, so I don't know if this is cut out or not. And uh, he said, what? what do you mean to talk about what's cut out? I said, oh, you know what? This gets confusing when I'm having all these different conversations with lots of different people in this imaginary world of mine. And he said to me, what are you talking about, Jason? I said, don't worry. Can I, can I get my papers now? Because at that time, he had this printing machine. Well, it was a printer. I guess you don't call them printing machines anymore. It was a printer. And it used to print out the address of each, you know, for each paper that needed to be delivered. And with any evening, it was the same paper. It was the, so I lost the connection. So for those listening to this, there might be a little break in connection when I upload it to the podcast. That can be an issue with doing live streams, but in some ways, um, not hearing me is probably just as relaxing as hearing me. He didn't didn't miss anything, unless I was gone for a while. Letitia is uh, possibly watching. Hello, Letitia. Cervantes and Veronica Riordan is there. So he used to have these printouts of the places I used to go. And I remember once when I was about probably 14 or 15, but I think 14, I went round my friend's house. I might have been 15, but probably 14. I went round my house, not round my house, round a friend's house, because we had uh, an afternoon off from school. I think there was like a teacher's strike or something. Uh, I didn't, they didn't call it strike, I think they called it industrial action. And uh, apparently once I left school, the, they didn't have any more strikes for years. So I don't know why that is. So me and my friend went around another friend's house and we got drunk, which of course I would never recommend anybody, especially no one under age should do that, but I did. And uh, out of all of us, I got the drunkest and very ill, I kind of learnt my lesson. I don't think I had any alcohol for a long time after that. But the funny part about it, apart from I completely wrecked the house, his mum and dad's house, um, that's not funny, but uh, they did forgive me, I hope. For some reason, they thought it would be funny to wrap me up in his mum and dad's bed covers, like the, the quilt. And I was out of it, like, why would, why would you do that? And, uh, yeah, so, so it wasn't good. But 
so I've been spent all afternoon drinking with them and they were drunk as well but I was just really I had like a pint of it's basically my friend got his dad's alcohol cabinet and he just we had a he gave me a, I had a pint glass with vodka and gin and whiskey and just like pretty but mainly whiskey but loads of other stuff and I was just necking it it was like drinking it all down which is a really bad thing really not something that I would recommend to anyone do I could I wouldn't do it now I couldn't do it now and I wouldn't and I won't you can't make me and then I went and did my paper round I went to the shop and I think what I did yeah I went into the shop and I got my I got the bag of papers and I delivered them I didn't cycle because you know I think I walked it it wasn't so much about safety it's just I couldn't cycle I just I don't know how I walked but I did it and then I came home I went upstairs and I went to bed and then I got a call downstairs got called downstairs and saying oh it's it's dinner time um, we got boiled eggs, is that okay? I said, yeah, boiled eggs, yeah, just what I need right now. A nice runny yolk. And I remember because Tucker's Luck was on BBC Two, and that was a TV show that had uh, Tucker, who was the star of Grange Hill. But you have to you have to be like my age to really remember that. And if yeah. Anyway, and then I went upstairs again, I went to bed. And uh I think one of my or I think both my friends came and visited me a couple of hours later to laugh at me. And then the next day, because you'd think, well, okay, I've learned from this. Next day, I had a hangover. I got through the whole day at school. Okay. You know, it wasn't easy, but I did it. The good thing about my, my academic ability at school was me sitting there staring out of the window throughout the whole lesson was kind of what I normally did so it was uh, no one noticed and I thought this is really good because my parents hadn't noticed my brothers hadn't found out because if they had found out everyone would have known and I'd have got in trouble I imagine so no one knew I knew to keep quiet. Got through school. Everything was fine. Went to collect my papers for the paper round. And all I need to, all I want to do is just get them delivered, get home, go back to bed and just sleep it off, that's all I wanted. And I got into the paper shop. And the first thing, like I didn't need, to, I didn't want to have a conversation. My head was still banging. Uh, and uh, the first thing, you know, normally, I don't, see the person that ran the shop, he would talk, you know, he was friendly enough and 
I was in the sea cadets with his son, two of his sons, one that I went to school with, I think, was there. Ah, I forget. But anyway, you know, normally he was quite busy. He didn't always have time, and he, you know, had to print out all the stuff on the printing machine, and he had to, um, I guess, put in the, the, make sure the addresses and stuff into the computing machine, and then I'd uh, put the papers into the computer, the paper bag and uh, he said Jason I said yeah he said um, where did you deliver your papers yesterday I said what do you mean he said you, you, you didn't deliver them I said yeah I did I delivered all of them I left here and I got home and I had an empty bag. I delivered every single paper. Every paper was put through a letterbox. He said, I don't doubt that. I'd just like to know which letterboxes. I said, what, what do you mean? He said, I've had phone calls all day. Not one person received the paper. I said, that's weird. I said, how, how could that happen? He said, I don't know, what, what do you think? I said, I can only think one thing. You know, you, you, you heard of invisible ink. You know, you can see the ink, you can see the print and then it disappears. The, it must be invisible paper. The paper's there, put it through the letterbox, and then it just disappears. Or maybe all the people on my paper route or route, round, didn't used to call it route or route, it was round, paper, round. Not square, not oblong, paper round. And maybe I said to him, maybe they all got like, organized like a, a Facebook page and got together and thought, let's pretend that we didn't get our papers for one day and maybe we'll get some free papers out of it. Or maybe a bar of chocolate each, or you know, we'll gain something. Bearing in mind, I was only 14 at the time, I didn't think big, I wasn't thinking about um, like suing or anything like money, just a bar of chocolate was a good, a good win, it was a win win situation. And he said to me, What's Facebook? I said, oh, sorry, I forget. We're still in 1984, aren't we? He said, yep. Oh, it's 83. He said, yeah, one of them. Doesn't really matter, does it? The point is, is there's no internet. There's no Facebook. I said, okay, okay. I said, I don't know where the papers went. I delivered them. He said, well, are you drunk? <laughs> I said, come on. I'm 14 years old. What would I be doing getting drunk? <laughs> and then uh, that was it. I think I had to pay for all the papers. So I didn't earn any money that week. Because I think the papers probably cost, I don't know, probably 10 pence each or Maybe they were more, maybe they were 20 pence each. 
maybe they were less, maybe they were 17 pence each, I'm not sure, but I think I had to pay the money back for the papers and also I had to, I had to knock on each door that evening and apologise. Oh great. And the first one, like, I'm really sorry. I don't know what happened. Apparently the paper was sort of some special invisible paper and it vanished and I'm really sorry, please. And I just like, you know, give them a kiss and you know, just like generally, like, I'm sorry. So maybe I thought I gave them a cake and stuff. Um, Marks and Spencer voucher. And then the second one was like, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry, I don't know what happened. Um, must the dog must have pulled it out of the letterbox and ran off, and because the dogs around it are pretty clever. I saw one the other day, and he was using a calculator. And uh, after a few doors, I got a little bit bored, and. Uh, I think the last house I rung the bell and they said and they answered I said there's your bloody paper and that was it so I kind of just I kind of lost lost the uh, lost my commitment to apology you can only apologize so many times before it no longer sounds real I think that was happening halfway through. I was knocking on doors saying like, I said, hello, Mr. Paperboy. I said, hello, Mrs. Paper Buyer. And I said, the first thing like, what happened to the paper yesterday? I said, okay, yeah, um, uh, yeah, I have to tell you something. Um, I'm really sorry that the paper was not delivered to you yesterday. Very, very sorry. Okay, thank you. So I don't know how well that went across. Yeah, I don't think I got a very good Christmas tip that year. The, th the worst thing about the Christmas tips is the best tipper was the lady who wanted to talk to me every time I delivered a paper. Whenever I walked up the pavement, she'd open the door I don't want to have this big conversation, but at the same time, she was rude to me. But she's like, Aaron is always wanted to talk. And I was rude back to her because that's what I used to be like. And we'd be rude to each other, but she seemed to love it. And she kept saying, oh, I'll get you sacked. I'll tell, the, tell your boss what you said and what you said you were going to do to my cat. And I'm like, I said, don't care, do what you want, makes no difference to me. Just a paper round, just a paper round, just a paper round. In fact, I could do this drunk if I wanted. He said, what? I said, no, don't worry about it. And she she was the best tipper. But I used to try to avoid her. You know, sometimes I'd paraglide down from the roof and uh, put the, you know, post the thing through her letterbox and then like climb up before she could open the door. And I'll just, she'd open the door and I'd be like hovering just above her head and she'd be looking around. Where is that little bastard? Where is he? And uh, that was good. Sometimes I would pay someone to deliver the paper for me just to that house. 
but that ended up being expensive. I was paying, I was actually paying more for him to deliver that one paper every day to that house than I was actually earning doing the whole paper round weekly. So that didn't work out very well. But she was a good tipper, Christmas tip. I think she used to give me something like four pound or a fiver or something. So it's a very, it's a very kind of difficult balancing act to navigate. And the sea cadet leader said, what the hell was that? I said, what? He said, we rank rambling on about newspapers and stuff like being drunk delivering newspapers what's that got to do with tying knots and I said I don't remember anymore if I'm honest with you I think I thought there was something slightly interested in talking about uh, smoke signals but I don't think there is and he said, well, you just wasted my time. Do you realize everybody's left now? I said, uh, okay, can I get a lift home, please? He said, okay. And that was it, that's the end of that story. And what I used to do is, and he said, what? I said, I just wanna finish the story about my brother about the listening to the radio, taping the, I would, yeah, taping the music charts on a Tuesday while he was at Tesco's walk, working. So what I used to do is put the tape in, have the audio playing, the radio playing, and I'd record it, but then I'd leave the room I'd go upstairs, or I'd go into the kitchen, or I'd go outside. I'd basically go to a different um, coordinate in the, on the planet. I'd leave that particular space. And then I'd wait until it was finished, and it'd last about an hour, I think, maybe something like that. Because it wouldn't, yeah, I don't know, however long. And then, I'd wait till my big brother got home and I'd listen to it with him. And that's the end of that story as well. I think the stereo system was next to the piano. Just to give you a visual, a little bit more visual quality to the story. And I had slippers, but I don't remember what type of slippers I had. I don't recall. No. Hmm. Oh well. So that's the end of this boring Let Me Bore You To Sleep. It was live on Facebook, or it is live on Facebook at this moment, but it won't be any longer because this is coming to an end. And it will be available on the podcast. I'll upload the podcast onto Facebook even though this video is kind of will still be on there um, and that's it so thank you for listening thank you for watching thank you for just thank you for just being you and I shall speak to you very soon.